can you make mindfulness a strategic initiative? Absolutely. A lot of organizations have already done that and shown the benefits. The key is bringing a business case to your leadership team. If you want to bring mindfulness to your company, you've got to make a case to the full leadership team and to the key uh, decision makers. What you have to do is rather than just saying, oh, it's wonderful, the benefits are great, this and that and so on, you need to really articulate what the benefits are relative to the pain points of the organization. What's happening now that's really, really costing the organization. What is it that's creating issues, creating challenges for them? Is it absenteeism? Is it lost productivity? Is it uh, turnover? What are the pain points? And as you address those, then you can start to make a case for how this can help. Uh, it's just like any sales process. People really don't care about what you're selling. They care about what the solution is that you're bringing them, how, what pain you're easing. So when you're looking at your organization, think about why you think that mindfulness is, would be useful. And this doesn't make a difference whether you are someone in the organization or someone in the leadership team making a case to the upper management or whether you are the CEO selling it down because that can be just as big a challenge. You've got to look from their perspective what's going on that's a frustration, that's a pain. Concretize it. Actually put some hard, hard numbers to it and then start to show how these solutions can work. Now, if you do a Google search on mindfulness in the workplace, you'll find all sorts of benefits that, uh, that are out there in the organization. It in, improves, uh, besides reducing stress and anxiety, it improves team function, improves, improves productivity, it uh, builds creativity, it builds resilience in team members and from decision makers, for leaders, there are amazing benefits from creativity to better strategic thinking, to being able to understand uh, and find their way through complex situations much more easily. These have been proven. So there's all sorts of benefits that you can find that you can link up, but first you have to start with where you're at. So let's say, let's start off with, say you are um, somewhere in the organization. We'll come back to if you're a leader selling down through the organization. But if you're somewhere in the organization, either an employee or um, a, uh, a mid-level manager or even part of the leadership team and you want to make a case, then let's start to articulate what's not working. What are the biggest frustrations in the organization? Is it that things are always coming in late? Is it that you can't uh, get any commitment for things? Is it that you can't uh, get people showing up because schedules don't work? Is, uh, there's problems with absenteeism. With some organizations, there's a huge amount of turnover. What is it? And the key is not just to say it's an issue, but let's put hard numbers to it. So if you look at the projects you're working on, how much have they been slowed down? And what is the dollar's cost to it? What is the impact? Really, really concretize it. Don't talk in abstract terms because that's how you make the case. That's how decisions are made, is based on the financial impact. Sadly, it's not based on the human impact. We've talked about stress in organizations for decades, and there's only been, to be brutally honest, lip service, except for a few exceptions. 
because there's no financial bottom line that shows that cost of stress. So you really have to articulate it. And I'm going to show you a resource a little later in this video that will help you do that if you want to. So, but it's really finding out what is the key issue. For some organization, it's getting people up to speed because there's turnover and a lot of that going on. For others, it could be, uh, you know, it, it could just it be issues of productivity, your teams aren't getting along. So it's really to say, okay, if those things are happening, what are the costs? How do they, um, you know, how do they impact people to really, really build it down to dollars and cents? So if this project got slowed down by how much, what was the dollar impact on that? How much more uh, work did we have to put in? How many more people hours? Let's put dollars and cents to it, okay, to really, really articulate what these costs are. Because when it's abstract, no one's going to pay attention to it. It's just an annoyance. When you concretize it, that's when attention is paid. Now, let's say now you're, that, that's if you're in the organization selling up. Now, let's say that you are a senior leader or CEO selling down to the organization. Because this can sound, for a lot of people, it can sound like kind of woo-woo stuff, right? It's, you want us, us to sit and meditate or whatever, and that's not all it is, but that's some of what it can be. So it's to really start to find out from your team members what are their frustrations, what are their pain points, and start to identify what it is in the same way that hurts them so that you might be able to have a solution for it. Second thing is if you are a leader in the organization without even saying a word about it, maintain your practice. Let people see what you're doing or not necessarily even what you're doing, but the impact it has. Let them notice the change in your behavior so that they know and they notice that, wow, this is happening. You know, you're not overreacting to these things. These are all working, you know, much more smoothly. You're, you're finding ways to get everything done. They see the impact in you and they start asking, okay, what's going on here? What's happened with this? What's, what's uh, the difference so that they see that? Then you've got a leverage point to approach them about issues about concerns that they have and start talking about, well, what if we could find a way for you to reduce your stress level, to, to be able to work better with each other and so on, so that you can find those leverage points. And again, just like if you're selling up, <clears throat> when you're selling down, the more you can concretize it into how much time has been spent in frustration and, and wasted and all of this stuff, the, the more effective you're going to be okay so now in terms of this in terms of concretizing this it's you know this is something that i've known for years for decades even uh, because i've worked with organizations on how to engage them how to inspire the people so that they're more there instead of beating them up uh, as was said in the book Coaching for Commitment, you can force people to do satisfactory work. The only way that they will consistently do outstanding work is if they want to. You have to create an environment where they support it and they want to do more, but they need that support in that. So you need to create that environment of support. <clears throat> but people aren't always willing to do that because They've got financial pressures on them. They've got deadlines. All of these things are impacting them. So how do you get people to move? Well, what I did in my first book was I targeted exactly that. I found a way to create a line in the financial statements for the cost of stress. Now, this is what I call the stress cost formula. What I did basically was I went out and I looked at 
all the research that had been done on the cost of stress. And it's out there, but it was all over the place uh, in little pieces, a little bit on absenteeism here, a little bit on EAP here, a little bit on turnover here. And <clears throat> no one had put the pieces of the puzzle together. And what I did was I found the ones that had uh, the most solid research. Like there was research I could find that said that upwards of 60% of absenteeism was due to stress, but it wasn't the most solid research. It was good, but it wasn't the most solid. I went with the most solid, and I found uh, that at least 19% of absenteeism is due to stress. So I put that in the formula. So I made sure that it was the most, most conservative numbers you could ever get. And you will still be amazed at how huge the numbers are. They're terrifying. People still don't believe it. So what I did was I found these numbers, the impact on absenteeism, on turnover, on disability, on EAP, and you punch in your own numbers. So it's not an abstract figure. You punch in what's going on in your organization. And <clears throat> turnover is another one that's huge. Absenteeism and turnover are the two biggest. So uh, most people think the cost of turnover is just the time in between the jobs. No, there's rock solid research that shows that for a frontline position, turnover costs at least 150 percent of the whole salary benefit envelope because you've got to count inefficiencies, lost productivity, training, mistakes, the recruiting process, all of that, you add all of that together. For mid-level managers, it's at least 200 percent. For senior managers, 250 percent. Now, several years ago, someone was in my programs and I gave them this data and they went out and measured on their own for their organization. And they found for their frontline employees that 150% is actually incredibly conservative. It was more like 500% for them. So you can actually calculate based on the number of people turning over in each position what the cost of turnover is. And 40% of that is due to stress. Okay, that's, that's a pretty rock solid figure. So you punch in your numbers. So what we've got here with the stress cost formula is a way that you can make a business case for addressing stress and lost productivity in your organization. So if you want to access it, I've made the ebook available for free. All you have to do is go to stresscost.com and you can download the full ebook for free and plug in the numbers to help you make a business case of this is how much we're losing right now. Let's invest something into mindfulness to support our people to move forward. And uh, so that, that's a leverage point that you may be able to use. So if you would like to find out more about leading and living mindfully, about bringing more of your heart and soul into work and helping your people do that as well, please subscribe and uh, I will see you soon. Bye-bye.